there. Welcome to our second episode of the Karen Wine Hour series. My name is Lona Kiema, the food and beverage manager. In this episode, Mukami, our wine expert, will take us on a journey to New Zealand and Spain. Mukami, karibu sana. I'm hoping we're going to learn quite a bit from you. You definitely will. Thank you very much. Thanks. Karibu. Hello everyone, it's me again, Mukami, here for the Kayak Country Club Wine Hour. This week we're going to go to two different countries, unlike what we did last week. This week we're going, actually, two different continents, actually. We're going to go to, we're going to start off in New Zealand, in, Mar in the South Island. Then we're going to go to Spain. So I wore red today because Spain is very dramatic and I like drama. And I thought it would match the wine. Um, these two wines are still part of the Pena Ricard collection although that they, they're not really what they, the brand usually makes, because here we have a Tempanillo blend from 2013, and this is a Sauvignon Blanc. So let's start with the New Zealand wine. Here we have wine from the Brancott Estate from Marlborough. Yes, Marlborough. Um, this is from 2018, and this was the first vineyard to grow Sauvignon Blanc vines in New Zealand. So some history of New Zealand, it's two islands, it's north and south. So this is in the South Island. And New Zealand is very much that country where everything happens, like earthquakes, and just it's just an environmental catastrophe, for lack of a better word. But the climate and the terroir of this particular region makes grape growing very suitable and creates wines that are very um, like fresh and earthy. I know last week I said that the wines from Jacob's Creek are fresh and earthy, but New Zealand, because of influences from the sea, given that this is an island, the vineyard specifically, this one, I'm not too sure if you can see on the bottle, since it's along the Mar Marlborough, Marlborough, yeah, sits along the coast, there's a very big influence of like cooling from the sea. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, New Zealand's on a very big country, so although you could find some other vineyards are what perhaps inland, you could drive around the island back and forth in maybe at most two days. So that's the New Zealand wine. This we have, I'm just gonna say from the get go, I'm not Spanish, so some of the words I'll pronounce will sound wrong, but that's okay, we're here to learn. And if you see me around the club and you know how to pronounce these words, please let me know. All right, so the second wine we're doing today is a Rioja from Campo Viejo. It's a reserve from 2013, and it's a blend of Tempranillo, Graciano, and Mazuelo. Um, so fun fact, this wine is made by women, which is very exciting and empowering. And what I expect from this bottle, I've never tasted this, is I expect this to reflect all the good qualities of a Tempranillo, but also have some soft, subtle edges because these three grapes are, um, I wouldn't say native to Spain, but they just happen to do extremely well in that climate. Um, given that both these wines are from the Pena Ricard uh, collect, winemakers collection and their history of innovation and you know, really getting into the, the winemaking and the style and perfecting the art of creating incredible products. I hope these, I expect that this wine will really bring out the best of Spanish wine and Spanish, Spanish winemaking culture. Um, yes, yeah, so just if you were to ask for this at the club, please do it with a decanter or open the bottle at least 30 minutes before, just so you can get all those amazing flavors and textures from 2013 out of the bottle. So when you do enjoy the wine, it's a brilliant experience. Yeah, I'm really excited to try this too. So let's start with the Brancot Sauvignon Blanc. Um, what wine are you drinking today? I mean, just opening it, it just smells like New Zealand. Like it's just, um, you can smell the ocean. Um, which may not sound very exciting if you don't like going to the sea, but then this wine carries a lot of like um, herbal notes. So like freshly cut grass and asparagus and capsicum and like minerality, like sea salt. And that also comes from the influence of the sea that this wine, that this vineyard goes through given that it's so close to the ocean. It's uh, like a bright, brightish, um, lemony color 
there's no effervescence in this one like we saw last year because the Chardonnay had some effervescence. And it's very clear. I hope you can see that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying it. It also has some notes of pineapple. Like um, when you peel a pineapple, then the skin, what it smells like, it smells like that. Wow. You can see me doing it's just all the acid that comes through it. But well, it's like a thin, very elegant line of acid. It's not like overpowering. For example, if you're to get a Sauvignon Blanc that's from a lesser known vineyard or region, you drink it, then you'll feel maybe, I feel it's just too much. But this one is like soft, smooth elegance, but you can really get the lime and the lemon and the like raw fruit coming across it. It's like a short finish so I would recommend that you have this wine with food if you don't really enjoy having wines that are like a bit bright and young if you do please have it on our really chilled and overall I'd say that this wine makes me think of a really nice day out with my friends even here on Sundowner on a really sunny afternoon or in the evening just catching up and maybe having a snack on the table. It's not, actually it's not a longer finish because I can still taste, feel it in my mouth, but for a Sauvignon Blanc, I think this carries everything that this grape and this varietal has to offer. I said that was very nice. I mean, I think all wine I drink is nice because I like nice things. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna just quickly rearrange my table. Remember it's very good to drink water as you drink wine, just alcohol in general. It just cleanses your palate and also it's good practice. Um, remember as I did last week, you reset your nose real quick. And let's go from New Zealand to Spain. Actually, I don't know. If I was to go from New Zealand to Spain by plane, I think that'd be a very long flight. Because I know New Zealand to, like, let's say Mar Marlboro. Hey, yo, Marlboro to Melbourne would be three hours. Melbourne to the UAE is like the 11 hours, then the UAE to Europe is maybe seven hours. So in my next life, I'll be doing like jumping the world just to drink wine. But I digress, let's go into this one now. I opened this earlier so it can decant. Oh, look at that. If, uh, can you see how excited I am to drink this? Oh my goodness, well, oh wow. Well. Uh, I want to say it's like maroon brownish and when, when red wine turns brown that shouldn't scare you it just means it's aged in bottle for a long time so this was put in in 2013 this is 2020 that's seven years in bottle so like i would expect it to have changed color just as the wine continues to like age and get better and better over time but just be careful, there's some red wines that shouldn't stay for very long time in bottle because they will get spoilt. And if you were to go buy a wine that you want to drink in 5-10 years, please store it in a cool dry place, not in the sun, because it'll tint the wine and will ruin everything about it. Um, yeah, let's see, it's like brownish, maroon brownish. Um, remember last week we talked about when our wine's very alcoholic, it'll leave like tears on the side. And I'm not too sure if you can see on this one. I hope you can, otherwise you can just get the bottle from Kayan Club. So the tears are coming down, not too slow, not too fast. Um, it's very viscous, which means they're thick. And viscosity is just like a measure of how, like the mouth feel of that wine. So if you take, if you go back to this one and you twist it, the viscosity on this will not be that, like the thickness or the mouth will not be that intense. Right, so let's taste it. Yeah, you know, I'm actually surprised that this wine is not as velvety as I thought it would be. It still has a lot of spice, a lot of... It's a very short finish. I really honestly thought it would be a much, a, a much longer finish on the palate, but it's you have a sip all the flavors and textures then it sort of then it dies out it's not as smooth or like velvety as i'd imagined which is a happy surprise 
I like when wine surprises me and I'm very surprised right now. And it tastes like cooked fruit, like Christmas, Christmas cake with all the fruit inside it. It's sort of like that. It also tastes like um, sultans, like cardamom, um, some spices in pilau, if that makes sense. But at the finish completely, it sort of it feels and tastes like a pot. Um, if yeah, this is this wine reminds me of port and I like port. So that again emphasizes that if you're to have this wine, you should have it as a celebration because not many people would appreciate the complexity and depth to this bottle. But if you do, or if you're looking to try something new, I recommend it. Uh, yes, I'm very pleased at this. And I'm very happy that I got to take you through these wines again today. Um, as last week, I couldn't decide which one I liked the best, but today I can definitely say that this is my favorite one. And I hope that when you're at Country Club next time, you choose from either of these two. You can have a takeaway from the bar that's open from 8 till 7.30 p.m. Just ask for it from the bartender or the waitress and they will pack you a bottle with a very big smile on their face. And do let us know on social media what you think about them, what you like, what you don't like. And going forward, do let us know what other wines you'd like us to try on our Karen Wine Hour. Thank you. Oh, that was amazing, Mukami. Thank you so much for taking us through the journey with our Spain wines and New Zealand. For sure, I now know what to have my pilau <laughs> with. Coming from the coast, I will definitely have the Spanish wine. Kindly engage us on our social media using our, our hashtag Karen Wine Hour. Um, give us your comments, suggestions. We'll be more than happy to listen to your, your views as well. Please stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you very much and bye-bye. <laughs>